Hi, I'm Ed McCool, president of McCool Risk Solutions. We are an insurance agency specializing in co-op and condominium insurance. Uh, today I'm here again with Sarah Schneff, who is one of our senior account managers. Her and the team handle over 300 of our co-op and condominium associations. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Sarah, in our last video we talked about the hard market uh, and the effects of it. If you had to pick one policy that you're, you're seeing the greatest increase on, what would it be? Commercial umbrellas, for sure. Why don't you tell our viewers what a commercial umbrella is and what it does? A commercial umbrella is a policy that provides extra coverage uh, should you exceed your limit on your primary policies. Okay. Now, the history of commercial umbrellas is, is normally if you wanted to get a commercial umbrella quote from a carrier, say Chubb, uh, you would pay something along the lines of $500 or $1,000 per million. So if you wanted a $10 million umbrella, you were going to pay $10,000. Anything over typically a $5 or $10 million limit is in a risk purchasing group. And those rates have been increasing slowly uh, over the last year or so simply because insurance companies are losing money, Okay, especially in New York. New York is one of the five most litigious states. Not only that, but the labor laws in New York are so unfriendly towards the property owner that if a contractor or, or their employee is injured, the property owner is typically held responsible, no matter what, whether there was negligence or not. And these uh, lawsuits are reasonably or often in the seven-figure range. I was having lunch with the president of one of the insurance companies, and he said they had more uh, they had more labor law claims that exhausted the million-dollar limit in the last seven years than they had in the prior 40 years of the company's history. So what you have is you have these, these suits that are, are, that are increasing. You have juries who are more sympathetic. Uh, and these judgments are, are, are in piercing the umbrella that they normally didn't in the past. So you combine these factors, the insurance companies who are charging minimal premium for a $100 million umbrella have basically said, we're not giving it away anymore. So that 50-unit building that could get $100 million for $1,100 anymore they have basically increased their rates and have said, well, it's going to be $4,000 these days. And, and, and that is part of the problem. Uh, also, you had property management firms who would go out and form their own master umbrella program within the umbrella program. So they would have even a lower rate because they would take their 4,000 units that they managed and put it in this umbrella and they'd get a quote that was $500 for, for $200 million. And the insurance companies have basically said, listen, we're giving it away at this point. We're losing money. And so they've taken it and they've basically wiped out the ability for property managers to have their own programs within a program, which is driving up the rates as well now. So rates are basically where they should be. So that $1,100, $100 million umbrella is, is probably gone for now and probably the future. Uh, and the insurance companies and these programs are charging a rate that is applicable, and that may be $3,000, that may be $4,000, that may be more. A lot of the program managers who manage these risk purchasing groups uh, have had a lot of problems the last year because they have a lot of carriers who are bailing out of these programs. So that $100 million umbrella program last year may only be $50 million this year simply because they can't offer $100 million, and the insurers are paying more for $50 million than they were paying for $100 million last year, which is right. kind of what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, one of the things that you had mentioned in the last video is possibly lowering the limits to offset some of the premium increases. That is a viable option. Does, uh, is it nice to have $100 million? The answer is yes, but like you said in the last video, it was really most insureds had it because it was cost effective. If it is cost effective to do so, then absolutely keep it. If it is not, then uh, it does make sense to go down to 25 or $50 million. So Sarah, how are you relaying this information to your clients? As their policies are coming up for renewal, um, I've been providing the insureds with multiple options for their limits, 25 million, 50 million, 70 million, which is what we're seeing right now, um, and along with their premium options for those limits and letting them choose from there. Okay, great. Sarah, thank you. Thank you.